And here is the Writer's Almanac for Wednesday. It's the 24th of June, 2020. Anniversary of Picasso's first exhibition in Paris, 1901, through the art dealer Ambrose Vollard. Picasso was 19 years old, unknown outside of Barcelona, 75 paintings, and the critical response was generally pretty good. So Picasso decided to stay in Paris. That summer, 1901, marked the beginning of his Blue Period, which lasted three years, during which he painted his famous The Old Guitarist. It's the birthday of Ambrose Bierce, born near Horse Cave Creek, Ohio, 1842, well known for his short stories, particularly An Occurrence at Owl Creek Bridge, and also for The Devil's Dictionary. He was in the Union Army in the Civil War. He fought in some of the bloodiest battles, later wrote stories about the war, bleak, bitter stories with senseless deaths and no heroes. It was on this day in 1374 in Aachen, Germany, the first recorded outbreak of dancing plague or dancing mania, also known as St. Vitus's Dance, began. Thousands of people at a time dancing uncontrollably days, weeks, even months until they collapsed from exhaustion. Some danced themselves to death. At the time, people believed it was the result of a curse from St. Vitus and now scientists tend to believe it was simply mass hysteria. It's the birthday of the poet John Chiardi, born in Little Italy, Boston's North End, 1916, author of many collections of poetry, and also the textbook How Does a Poem Mean?, still widely used in high schools. And it's the birthday of the novelist Anita Desai, born in Missouri, India, 1937. Her mother German, her father Bengali. She grew up speaking German at home, Hindi with her friends, learned Bengali from her father, listened to Urdu poetry in the street, and learned to read and write in school in the English language. Author of 12 novels, all in English, Clear Light of Day, In Custody, Fasting, Feasting, three of them. And it's the birthday of the poet Stephen Dunn, born Forest Hills, New York, 1939. Published more than 10 books of poetry before his collection Different Hours won the Pulitzer Prize in 2001. His first love was basketball. He was a star on the Hofstra basketball team of 1962. They went 25-1 and one on the year, played pro basketball for a couple of years after that. He was a brochure writer for Nabisco for seven years and then quit, moved to Spain with his wife, and started to write poetry. Here's a poem for today by Maxine Cuman, entitled Spring Training. For Victor. Some things never change. The velvet flock of the turf, the baseline smoothed to suede, the ancient smell of peanuts, the harsh smack the ball makes burrowing into the catcher's mitt. Here in the grapefruit league's trellised shade, you catch pie trainers lofting right field foul all over again. You're ten in Fenway Park and wait past supper time for him to autograph it, then race for home all goosebumps in the dark to roll the keepsake ball in paraffin. Soften your secondhand glove with neat's foot oil and wrap your Louisville slugger with friction tape. The Texas leaguers, whatever league you're in, still tantalize the way they waver and drop. Carl Hubble's magical screwball is still, give or take, 60 years unhittable. Sunset comes late but comes inexorable. What lingers is the slender hook of hope. Spring Training, a poem by Maxine Cuman from her collection, Connecting the Dots. That's the Writer's Almanac for Wednesday, June the 24th. The Writer's Almanac, funded by donations from listeners like you. And it's available on PRX for distribution by your local radio station.